Hey guys, how are you going? In this video, I'll be showing you how to apply text shadows using CSS. So essentially, uh, this is achieved by using the CSS property that is called text shadow. And it works in a very similar way to the box shadow property. So if you have knowledge of how to use the box shadow property, uh, this tutorial should be quite straightforward for you. If not, it is still very easy to apply text shadows using CSS. And also, this has great browser support, including Internet Explorer. So let's just get right into how to actually apply text shadows using CSS. So inside the text editor right here for that HTML file, it looks something like this. So now let's just add a new div down here and put some text inside of it. So let's make a new div with an ID of my div. And inside here, let's just say something like some sample text. So now we, uh, we're going to, of course, blur or sorry, add a text shadow um, to this text right here. But first, I'm going to save this and refresh. And of course, we have something like this. So now let's go inside the CSS and of course, add that text shadow. So back inside here, let's just firstly target uh, the ID of my div. And then we're going to be using the text shadow property. So this works just like this. You just say text shadow. And then here um, you describe what the text shadow is going to look like. Now, of course, just like uh, many different CSS properties, there are different ways to use this property. Um, but I'm going to be showing you the most common way um, or ways to use this property. So firstly, um, you need to firstly just specify uh, your X and your uh, Y offset. Okay, or your horizontal and vertical offset. So essentially you specify your horizontal offset first. So for example, let's just say five pixels right there. And then you specify your Y offset. So this can be, for example, once again, five pixels. Once you have those two things down, you then specify a color for your text shadow. So in my case, let's just say blue so we can actually see a bit more clear what's uh, what's happening. Okay. So now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here. As we can see, we get a non blurred text shadow that is five pixels from the right of the text and then five pixels down. So of course, if I was to go back inside here and change uh, the horizontal offset to be something like, uh, let's just say 30 pixels, and we can make the Y offset something like 100 pixels, uh, saving this and refreshing should now, um, as we can see, of course, it's gone 100 pixels down on the Y offset. And of course, it's been moved 30 pixels to the right on the horizontal offset. So typically, you're either going to have uh, these two properties, the exact same value, something like uh, two pixels, or you're going to make them zero. Okay, so in my case, I want to make these two pixels. Okay, um, let's just save this here and refresh. And of course, we have this right here. So now, of course, one of the main parts of this is to actually blur the shadow and make it look like an actual shadow, right? So to achieve that, uh, very similar to box shadow, you simply specify um, your your blur radius here. So let's just say, for example, 10 pixels for my blur radius. So now saving this and refreshing is going to blur it uh, looking something like that. So obviously that right there is probably uh, the most common usage of the text shadow uh, property. Um, but I do want to mention also that if you want to, um, if you want to add like a basic uh, shadow, just like sort of like a straightforward shadow, um, you do want to be using uh, the RGBA uh, type of color uh, right here um, instead of using something like black. That way you can specify an opacity. So for example, I can say here 0, 0, 0, which refers to black. And then I can say right here as, uh, as the fourth parameter here, right? I can say 0 0.25. So now it is a 25% opaque black background. So now, or sorry, our uh, color. So now saving this and refreshing gives us something like this. As we can see, it is a very subtle text shadow. Of course, uh, to make this uh, more prominent, you can uh, increase uh, the opacity of your RGBA color. Um, but uh, the main reason why you want to use RGBA is, of course, not only for the opacity control, um, but also um, if you use a different background um, uh, for your text, 
um, you're still going to see the colors of the background come through the text shadow. So definitely try and use the RGBA um, alternative, uh, you know, uh, to using a standard color. So that right there is how to use the text shadow property or how to apply text shadows using CSS. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.